Chancellor, you said in your speech, you asked rhetorically, how can you convince that peace is more profitable than war? You didn't ask the question, but I will ask you again yourself. Will you be able to send to the Security Council that we need war crime tribunal in Somalia because today the war makers are convinced war is more profitable because the next negotiation they may have the upper hand. They are free to kill, to destroy, and to derail the peace. That's one question I'd like you to ask. The second, sir, your good office has done a good job of negotiation, but you've made some mistakes. And I wonder if your office will own to those mistakes. Not long ago, you've said in Djibouti that uh, the journalism in Somalia should stop reporting the massacres. You ask for a moratorium of reporting massacres. Will you explain that? Thank you. He said, he said that uh, you had said that journalists should not report massacres. You want to take several? Thank you, Mr. Smith. My name is Dave Sheik. I'm with Emirates Group. Uh, I thank you very much for what you doing to Somalia. My question is, the last meeting we have in Washington, you said the UN uh, going back to Somalia. Now we have a government, whatever it is. Did you plan to go back to Somalia? Thank you. We'll take one more and then, yes. <laughs> so, go ahead. Yeah, thank you very much, Nuruddin uh, Sati, former DSRS Burundi. I had the privilege of following on your footsteps in Burundi. Uh, uh, yeah, well, um, my question is uh, concerning the issue of, uh, of, of, of clanism. You have worked in Burundi with uh, the issue of ethnicity, and you have worked in Somalia, the issue of, now there is the issue of clanism, that there was a debate in the previous session on this issue. Uh, wh how, wh how do you view this, and what kind of solution do you think should be envisaged for this issue? We'll take one more because I called on you before. Yes. Over here. Uh, first of all, I want to commend uh, Ambassador Ahmed for keeping in touch with the diaspora. We get emails from his office, and that's not something we get used to, so I want to commend him that. Uh, my question is the issue of peacekeeping. There was a push by the United Nations to send peacekeeping to Somalia. Is that still going? Are we going to consult with the new government and to see if they like it? If they say we don't want peacekeeping, things will go back to normal. Will you honor that? That's my question. OK. Put on your mic there. Just press that. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, how to convince people that uh, that peace is more profitable than war. You know, we, we have someone we, we know in Washington who has written on conflict and money. You know, most African conflict, but I suppose everywhere else, uh, when you have a conflict, there is always a money trail. In some countries like Sierra Leone, Liberia, but also Congo, uh, the money basis of a conflict was easy to identify to diamonds. They were, it was so famous that even we had the movie, Blood Diamonds. Or, okay. And uh, in, in, in Somalia, whatever the, 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 the situations, some people are making money on, on the conflict, you know, as in every conflict. But the, the cost, the suffering, first, for Somali image, reputation as an individual, as a country, is such. And at the same time, the Somali business community is so competent, so uh, successful, that I always wonder that if we have peace, what will happen from Djibouti to Durban, I, I think will be a, 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 an area dominated by Somali businessmen, because they are active, they, they 
they work hard and and even despite the crisis now b between dubai mogadishu and uh, eastly eastly this neighborhood where somebody live it is like a stock market you know every day they fix the price of good of the currencies and everything so uh, i always thought that um, with peace so, so uh, there will be more money and in fact uh, I was working with uh, prominent African and Arab businessmen uh, in, in many areas in you know oil banking uh, to, to see how uh, to, to organize a meeting between Somali businessmen and this Arab African and some Western uh, businessmen on uh, justice and reconciliation uh, uh, press should not report the massacre. V this, uh, 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 I remember very well how this happened. And uh, it is not a place to elaborate on it, but I, I will speak shortly on it. In, I, I was in Addis, second, uh, Monday, second uh, February, and Sheikh Sharif, the new government of Somalia, was there. And there was an attack. Uh, on uh, African troops. And I, I was with a veteran, competent, professional American journalist, Voice of America. I told him this attack is a diversion from what is happening. And it reminded like uh, uh, Radio Milkolin. Some people took it immediately without checking with me without checking with the interviewer, without reading them, and very professionally, they publish it. And before they publish it, before they send me a letter to say, what can you do? They made a press release, which ethically is uh, very controversial. Uh, I cannot blame journalists. They live in a terrible environment. They are threatened. My generation have suffered from one party system culture. But, you know, many people sometimes are mistaken with me because they think I'm looking for a career. I'm retired. I'm like my friend here. So we, this kind of blackmail has not worked. I deplore the death of journalists. I cannot accept it. But activism is, is sometimes not uh, paying with me. Yeah. This is what I can say on this. Uh, 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 I have well documented uh, background for freedom, the plans of human rights, and I'm very happy now everyone is mentioning international justice, criminality. No one, no one was talking about it before February 2008. And I'm very happy Africa Watch spoke about it today, Amnesty International make it public, and I encourage you to continue, because this is the role of, you know, to you know, Somali have suffered so much, but it should not be justice of revenge. Somali should find their own way to have interna internal reconciliation with the Samoa, you know, the pardon, like justice and reconciliation. They can go to, once again, Article 9 of Djibouti Agreement was very clear, justice and reconciliation. Who are we? to impose which kind of justice. I know we can go through Security Council and ask for a specific resolution. Though Somalia has not signed the Roma Convention, Security Council can suggest it. We can have a commission of investigation. And my office was the first to talk about it. But we can also ask Somali to have their own justice, like in Morocco or in Peru or Guatemala or in South Africa, or the case who is specific in Rwanda. Gataga, Gat, Gatasha, yeah. So what is important is to address impunity. The way to do it, we, we, we have all to think about it. And these are very serious matters. They should not be thrown uh, on the street like, like that. Uh, on the clan, solution, tribe. Really, I am I, from a, a system, social system, where we have tribe. 
I have cousin who are minister in Polisario. I was in government in Mauritania. So uh, I have some Mauritanian whose cousin are minister in Senegal and other in Morocco. So the tribal system is not shocking me. What I don't like, what I don't understand, I mean, is manipulation uh, to, to make it even ridicule. You cannot take two competent people because one of them is from the same tribe and uh, uh, you have to include 4.5. In, in it. So this is what I think, but it is up to Somali to find a way to get out of, uh, of it. On, uh, on peacekeeping, to me the priority is to note that Somalia, and this is your first question, when to be back in Somalia, Somalia is the only country I know of w where you have no diplomatic community. UN is today 193 member states. Somalia have two ambassadors, one uh, representing the Arab League and one ambassador of Libya. Both courageous men, I know them very well, uh, we meet them often. I, and to, to tell you the truth, I feel very bad that we are all in Nairobi no one in Somalia. I, I, I was, every time I go to Paris, London, or Washington, I complain, why don't you have a green zone? Why should we get in, in, in uh, get, uh, why should we be based in Nairobi and not in Mogadishu? There is risk. We take serious risk, or you close everything. You let between Somalia. But I, I, if I were Somali, I would not accept exclusion. This is not religious, it's not politics. Somali is a member of international community and deserve to, to have, for good or bad, uh, you know, representative uh, of international community. It is, uh, I, I mean, I don't think Somali is right compared to, is the only one right com when you have 200 member states of uh, United Nations. On, on the peacekeeping, the same thing. If, to me, the priority now is how to help the government integrate its forces, security forces. And we keep telling them TFG, it could be uh, government of national unity, TFG slash government of national unity, or whatever. Uh, Deng Xiaoping from China is supposed to have said, we don't care if a cat is black or gray as long as it cash mice. So what is important for Somali also is to have a government who can deliver and make them proud of having a government. Thank you. I think we'll just take two more questions and then uh, we need to close for the... Will you? I'll be over there. <laughs> Assalamu alaikum. Uh, thank you very much for being here. It's really a great honor. Um, like you said, I have a comment and a question. Um, and I think uh, you can answer the comment later on, uh, the question later on. Um, my comment is, uh, like you've stated, I believe the problem we're having, it's really a Somalian issue. And unless we really have a self questioning doubt, each one of us, to really see what we need to do to change the situation, it's not going to change. So that's my comment to Somalis. Uh, the question that I have is, what are the things that people in the diaspora, because the two things for me when I look at a government or social, that really make a progress or a development, which is a human capital and the natural resource, which we both have. For, but for some reason, it's not working. There's a lot of people educated, intellectual, articulate, loving, but uh, for some reason, we're not really delivering what we need to deliver. And in terms of resource, like you said, we have the highest coast in, uh, in uh, the largest coast in Africa. So what are the things that, in terms of international, that you believe in Somalis, we need to develop more, which is leadership, but still, I would like to get more in-depth comments of individuals with the characteristic and values that are critical really to change the situation. Thank you. I'll take one over here. Go ahead. Uh, 
Uh, thank you, Ambassador. Uh, thank you for your uh, good efforts you're doing for Somalia. I got two questions for you. My first question is, is the UN planning to help Somalia build its police force? I don't think we really need to have a peacekeeping force. My next thing is, uh, the whole world agree that Somalia is the worst humanitarian crisis in the world. Uh, uh, does the UN has a plan like the one Ambassador Sahanoun did in Geneva, 100 days flooded with food and medicine to help the people? Okay, do you want to answer those? What, what, the last point? You want to repeat the last point? Yeah, I was in Geneva, uh, the event where Ambassador Sahanoun invited like donor countries, and within 100 days they flooded you know, medicine and, and, and food. To help the situation. Thank you. You see, Professor Samantar and, and you, you have mentioned this problem of leadership. You need a good leadership, but it is not unique to Somalia. It is all, I should not say all African countries. You know, in the 90s, we had a terrible leadership. We still have a problem of leadership in, in Africa. You know, we, we need not only competent, but committed, committed and caring. And this is, the, you know, in the 90s, we're always talking about our, our leadership. You know, people come to power very competent. And then, because our culture, education, lack of a media, by the way, the guy become crazy. He, he thinks he is God. <laughs> he is. And I, I was speaking with uh, Obasanjo, and he told me, we, we were talking about, you know, our leadership in Africa, what to do. And he told me, he, he liked this idea of circles. And he said in, uh, in, in the US or in Europe, for instance, the leadership is really thinking of people. Security for, no, we are talking about security, leadership and security. In, in, uh, in uh, Europe or in the US, from what Obasanjo was telling me, the priority is security of people, then security of the state and institution. And eventually, when the president travels, his own security. And he said, in Africa, we have a reverse. First, security of the president, security of, uh, of a function, meaning his own function, and probably security of his family. There is a change in Africa. I, I think, uh, you, you know, I, I have seen a change over the last decade. There is improvement in general. Uh, because the media, because civil society organization, because the travel, uh, leadership have improved in, uh, in most African countries. In, in Somalia, it, I cannot make a judgment because I, I have been there only 15 months. It is a complex issue. First, the clan system, 4.5 and so on, excludes some people. Second, the best educated are not at hand. So uh, I'm not saying that power is for grab, but people who know what the budget is, what you see in, in this country, in the US, you, you, I don't think it is very important to have a competent president because the institutions are competent. <laughs> <laughs> the institutions are good. The, you know, the system function. In, in our country, in our country, if the president is not good. A good president in America. <laughs> I'm not sure. <laughs> no, but in, in Africa, if a president is not good, it is a disaster because the institutions are not functioning. Civil society, media, banking system, and so on. So to me, the solution, there is no solution, but the beginning of a solution in Somalia is really tolerance. My perception, and I may be wrong, uh, but I think Somali are so maximalist. They would like their president or their minister, who is just new to deliver. You know, the first is try to help him or help her, G give them a break, G give them three months, six months, lobby for them. If they don't deliver after the honeymoon, 100 days, or Okay, but we, 
I have seen it, you know, time I was there. Uh, I, I think Noor ad was a decent prime minister. His entourage was decent. Y Yusuf has his own character, but he was patriot. So try to take for good of each president. But it, we try to just say he must be the best and deliver yesterday, not, not today. So we have a new government. Uh, I, um, if I say that Sheikh Sharif is decent, uh, may, I don't know if it is good for him or not, but I think he is decent. Give him uh, a truce, uh, you know, 100 days, and try to support him. If he doesn't deliver, okay, go after him if you want, but give him a break. <laughs> but give him a break. Don't say he has not done this. The guy is one week old, and they start shelling him. <laughs> It's not possible. So we need to help. This is what I think on uh, leadership. Uh, UN police force. Uh, yeah. Uh, well, I, I, did I mention a green zone or not? Huh? Yeah. So. Yeah. Well, I, I, I have said that uh, Somalia is the worst crisis because I was. I must tell you also. I, I have. Uh, everyone has his agenda. For me, uh, it is very important to have the British, American, and the French, the three permanent members of Security Council, interested and concerned by the situation in Somalia. Uh, first, they are the closest to Africa for a number of years. Though China and Russia are, they have their own concern. I think this European and American are the region where you have most Somali. Most Somali are in the West. So uh, I, I was very interested in anything which could encourage American, British in particular to do something. I would like them to do it positively. They have been doing it. They are now concerned by security issues. You know, to have a country like America where the first citizen to commit suicide is Somali born is not helpful. Uh, it has to be addressed. Uh, and uh, I, I would not be surprised if there is more check and balance in UK, Scandinavian country, Canada, US, for security reasons, because these are serious matters. But to avoid that and to see the good side of so, so, Somali elite, uh, we need a minimum stability in Mogadishu. We need people to return to Mogadishu. We need international community to Mogadishu, everyone. I, I think what is happening is a disaster to have everyone in Nairobi and uh, say we are dealing with Somalia. And when we try to go to Djibouti, because Djibouti care for Somalia, they speak the same language and so on. It was a revolution. It, it was very difficult to, to do it. So I would like to thank all of you, especially my Somali brothers. I feel close to them for a number of reasons. I would like to thank the organizer and uh, and uh, sisters who are very uh, very active. You know, I have uh, Khadija, where is she? You know, I, I know uh, some uh, colleagues here, yeah. And uh, I think it is not. It, Somali was hurt. It is still hurt. And we should try to understand it, but not to analyze it. I, again, I'm not against analysis. On the contrary, we, we, you, you make studies and professor make studies. We need to give them a helping hand for Somali to stand up. And this is where we are. We have to help Somali in their interest, in the interest of the region, and in the interest of international community. They can do it if you see how successful they are in Dubai, in Kenya, in, in, uh, in, in everywhere. Somali need assistance, not compassion, but, but they need support. Thank you very much.